oxalates. Do we even need to worry about them? I feel like lots of people are talking about them, so we're gonna talk about what they are, what they do, why they matter, and what it means to you and what you eat on a daily basis. Welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Wink. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Do you have a piece of kale stuck in your throat? That's what it sounds That's like right now. a fair question. There's been some laryngitis going around. I do not feel unwell, mm -hmm. but I didn't get the best sleep because of the call last night. Sometimes when I'm kind of tired, I guess I get that, but. Do you feel contagious? I do not feel contagious. And what's good for me, because I usually talk loud and I talk a lot and I talk fast, so mm -hmm. it's helping reduce all that. It's like therapy. Yeah. It's like and talk if therapy. If I have me. it next week, I know it was contagious. Oh, fair. All right, fair. oxalate okay. C2O4 with a charge of negative two. I thought you might What's remember the deal with it. So oxalic acid, oxalate. So this is a compound that is only found in plants. Okay. Not found in any animals. There you go. And it's described as something called an anti-nutrient. Plants need it. Okay. Because plants use it to fight off prey, herbivores, other infections right. that it can get. Right. Plants use it, I'm pretty sure it plays a role in photosynthesis, okay. which is key because plants, as you know, are primary producers, which means they can take the energy from the sun, turn amazing. it into a form of energy that we can use. It's amazing, actually. Right? It really is amazing. And it's part of life. Yeah, it's part of life. And so when it comes to a defense, you're like, well, how does it, how does it allow a plant to defend itself from a rabbit who's so cute, mm -hmm. but likes to eat all the stuff in your garden? Mm -hmm. So what an anti-nutrient is, it, can make the host that eats it mm -hmm. feel unwell. Right. And the main issue in humans is people say, well, oxalates lead to kidney stones. We're gonna talk about that in a sec. Mm -hmm. So then I thought to myself, well, does a rabbit go to like a spinach patch, mm -hmm. eat a bunch of spinach, get a kidney stone and say, oh mama, yeah. I, got a, I just passed a yeah. huge kidney stone. Yeah. I'm not eating any spinach That's anymore. One angry rabbit. Right, so kind of. Yeah. Um, you could argue whether or not rabbits think or not about stuff like that, but they recognize that they did something and they feel unwell, and yeah. then so they avoid it. So it's like conditioning. It's funny because when you, uh, well, it's I, like thought, Skinner. I thought Popeye. I'm like, does right. Popeye suffer from an inordinate amount of kidney stones? That's why he looks so angry, and does he take it out on olive oil? Okay. That's the first thing that came to my mind when okay. I heard spinach and oxalates. Well, fair. We can talk about that. So, so why does it matter with respect to kidney stones? So oxalates. Um, bind calcium. So this is one of the issues. It binds other nutrients and potentially makes them not absorbable. And in human beings, um, when it binds in some people, it can lead to a kidney stone. Calcium so, oxalate. Calcium C oxalate. CaC2O4 with no more charge. Very nice. So how common are kidney stones? So we're like, well, is this a problem for you? You're watching. Like, I haven't had a kidney stone. Do I have to worry about oxalates? Well, one in 10 people in the world get kidney stones. There's some variation, but generally speaking, it's shocking, it's right? Lot. So it's a lot of people, so one in 10, that's first thing. Of those people, 50% of those people are gonna have another kidney stone. So sorry if yep. you've already had one, buckle down, because you might have another one. Right. 20, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, no, there's a genetic component, I was gonna that's, say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so 20 to 40% of people have a first degree relative right. that's had a kidney stone before. So if your dad has a kidney stone, also buckle down, mm -hmm. get ready. And of all these stones, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of stones, but about 75% of them are oxalate-based stones or calcium, calcium oxalate. oxalate. Calcium oxalate. When calcium joins with oxalate, it's a precipitant reaction, which means it falls out of solution. It's not water-soluble. That's why it's a problem when it's hanging around your urinary tract. All right, so imagine like you drop in like a, like a, sh a sugar cube or a salt cube into water. If the water's warm, it can dissolve. Yeah. But eventually, there, you can cause a chemical reaction that could cause it to precipitate, and then you can see that solid form. Yeah. And that's what gets stuck either in our ureters or our, heaven forbid, it sometimes makes it to your bladder. And then if it gets into your urethra, this can be a very problem. It can cause actually life-threatening um, infections, mm -hmm. arthritis, all sorts of things. Pain, too. Pain. If a you talk to someone who's had a pain. kidney stone, and if you have, leave a comment, and you're probably going to use all capital letters in your comment, because that's how much pain you have. I bumped into one of our colleagues in the barbershop yeah, the yeah. other day. In the barbershop? Yeah. That's awesome. He <laughs> did not look well. And you're like, hey, and bro. I'm like, what's up? And he's like, oh, I got kidney stones. Oh, did and you go, what's that? <laughs> Like, I was getting his haircut, and I was okay. like, well, it's probably going to fall out. Okay. A lot of younger people will not even get that reference to a Bud Light commercial. That <laughs> yeah. was a very, very successful campaign. Yeah. Um, hopefully he's doing okay. I, I think I'm no, not... I, I hope, well, that was last week. I'm hoping he's passed it by now. Okay. So let's talk about where we find oxalate. So we said it's not in, it's not an animal product. This is actually one of the reasons that I think some keto and carnivore and super low carb people say, hey, to eat like us, don't eat any yeah. plants because of the oxalate. So... Carnivores one, vegans zero. Right, okay. So 
most common sources are spinach, um, beets, almonds, rhubarb, sweet potato. So honestly, I think if it was going to give kidney stones to everybody, I 100% would have a kidney stone. Yeah, you might still. And I've never, I've never had one. Yeah. Um, but having said that, it doesn't matter to the average person. You can probably eat as much of that. Eat a balanced diet. Yeah. Things that you can do, though, to reduce your risk of getting a stone if you're already a stone form is you don't have to completely eliminate oxalates, but you probably need to be on the lower end, 100, 200 yeah, milligrams. Yeah, you might get counseled that way if you have. Yes, had and if you're really have... afraid, then maybe you would say, you know, I'm not going to eat any because I'm super nervous. Okay. And I get it. If you've had that pain, I totally understand that. Other things you can do other than reducing those foods is eating calcium with your meal because that helps bind it and then it gets extruded out your colon right. rather than being absorbed and, and later then... calcified. Calcifying. Being a problem. That's first thing. Second thing is stay well hydrated. Hydration. That's Which is key. any kidney stone, right? Yeah, any stones or anyways. You get stone in your parotid glands. You get stone. You can make stones in your body. Yeah. Hydration is the key to keep things flowing, keep them moving. Let's and if you've had a kidney stone, then or if you have one, then super hydrate so you yes. can excrete it. Absolutely. But so those are the those are the things that you can do. The average person, if you eat a well balanced diet, you're probably not going to get a kidney stone because of oxalates. Nine out of ten chance you won't. Yeah. Right. It's not diet related. It's like some of it's genetics, some of it's even anatomy. But yeah, and some of it's your diet. Right. So the take home message is oxalates are a real compound. Yeah. Oxalates are the main contributing factor to kidney stones. They are. If you have had kidney stones that are oxalate based, you should probably limit or avoid oxalates. You should. But for everybody else, these are actually present in a lot of foods that are very good for you because of their fiber content, their vitamins, their antioxidants. So back to plant-based eaters, one. Keto sure. carnivore, left. But it's like a lot of things, right? Get sun, you need your sun, you need to be outside, yeah, get your sun, much. but don't get sunburned, don't get skin cancer. Right. Go out in the woods, prescription for nature, but don't get a tick bite and get Lyme disease. Exercise, maybe don't become an ultramarathoner because that can be, have its own consequences. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Go doc when you're on the lower hydration side or yeah. crazy like that right. too. That's that, oxalates. I, I love this topic because I think a lot of people want to do what's best for themselves. Yeah. And like our channels, at the end of the day, we don't really care what you eat. You get to decide. Our job is to provide you with the scientific evidence so you can make an informed choice and then just do your best. So we want you to buy our anti-oxalate <laughs> supplement that we created. Do we have one of those? We do not have one of those. We should. Yes. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, all um, about this stuff. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. And your oxalate consumption. We'll see you next time.